From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Friday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thanks for starting your day with us. And I'm Ed McIntosh. It was near a record setter yesterday. And today, we're going to back off just a little bit. It'll be very pleasant. We'll take another run at records again tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, you know, like we got nothing else to do. 55 right now in the rims, but you get below the rims and the temperatures are in the 30s and 40s across the area. You can see some of that smoky haze around this morning. Yesterday at the airport, the official high came in at 83, 20 degrees above average and just four degrees shy of the record for the date. Also, we're still not looking at any precipitation so far this month. And even through the weekend, only scattered showers around. It's getting to be a long stretch. We're well over 30 days without any measurable precipitation. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s, even low 50s across the region with 58 the warmest in uh, Sheridan, Wyoming this morning. 35 looks like the coolest right now in Butte. We're looking at a mix of temperatures in between. They see that little push of clouds across northeastern Montana, but otherwise pretty quiet. Temperatures are in the 50s across most of the region here as we get started this morning. And then we'll just warm up from there. Temperatures really soar later in the day, back up into the mid 70s, running about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than average by the time we get later on into the afternoon. We'll tell you more about that coming up in a little bit. All right, sounds like a plan. And in the meantime, I'll get everyone caught up on the news. Thanks, okay, thanks. We begin in Washington, D.C. this morning, where House Speaker Nancy Pelosi plans to roll out legislation today that could result in a loss of executive powers for the president. Pelosi is questioning if President Trump is fit to serve after his COVID-19 diagnosis and treatment with experimental drugs. She also wants him to, to disclose more about his health. The new legislation would create a commission to allow Congress to intervene under the 25th Amendment. It states a president cabinet or Congress can step in when the president is unable to do their job. President Trump says he's getting back on the campaign trail even without an official negative coronavirus test from doctors. The move comes after the president backed out of the scheduled debate next week in Miami after organizers announced plans to make it virtual. CBS's Skylar Henry brings us the latest. President Trump says if it were up to him, he would hold a campaign rally this weekend. We want to do a rally in Florida, probably in Florida on Saturday night. Might come back and do one in Pennsylvania in uh, the following night. The president called into Fox News twice on Thursday, initially sidestepping whether he's been tested again for the coronavirus after contracting it last week, but then saying he'd probably be tested today. His physician anticipates he'll be able to have a safe return to public engagements on Saturday though the CDC recommends two negative tests before leaving isolation. The push for President Trump's return to the campaign trail comes after he rejected new plans from the Commission on Presidential Debates that announced a virtual format because of Mr. Trump's illness. I'm not going to do a virtual debate, sit behind a computer screen, and that gives him the answers because they'll be handing him the answers. Former Vice President Biden agreed to the format, even though the commission announced the change yesterday without consulting either campaign. I'm sticking with the dates, I'm showing up, I'll be there, and in fact, if he shows up fine, if he doesn't, fine. The Trump campaign issued a statement demanding that future debates must proceed in person and would rather add another in-person debate at the end of October. Plans the Biden team is rejecting. Skylar Henry, CBS News, Washington. For now, both candidates have agreed to what would have been the third debate date on October 22nd in Nashville. Joe Biden's campaign announced it will hold a town hall event on October 15th in Philadelphia in place of the doubtful debate. Now closer to home, this week's COVID-19 infection rate in Yellowstone County was 41 cases per 100,000 people. If it were to stay at that rate by October 31st, a new round of restrictions would be placed on local residents and businesses. Health officer John Felton said bar and restaurants capacity would be allowed at 50%. He set that number at 25% in his announcement earlier this week. Many business owners in the community are worried their businesses may not survive another major shutdown. Meanwhile, the hospitals in Yellowstone County are filling up. A new state report shows beds are 90% full. At Billings Clinic, just 53 of their 300 plus beds are available. Patients infected with the coronavirus are occupying more than 50 of those, while the remaining beds are filled by people suffering from something else. 
St. Vincent Healthcare, a spokesperson says they're right on with the county at 90% occupancy. 45 of the 217 people hospitalized there have the virus. Still, leaders from both hospitals say they will provide care to everyone who needs it. Billings Clinic is still being pushed for capacity, but I will tell you that we will find a way to provide beds. We've got so many other sister hospitals and being part of this larger system. The Front Range in the Denver area, this all did blow up for them at, at kind of the beginning of things in March, April, May. And so being able to use their experience here locally has been huge. Between both hospitals, 27 COVID-19 patients are in the intensive care units. According to the state, just six ICU beds remain open and all at St. Vincent Healthcare. In election news, ballots will be put in the mail today and could be in your hands as early as tomorrow. A last minute push by the Republican Party to stop mail only voting in Montana was crushed when the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear their case. 45 Montana counties will go the mail-in route. 11 and others will have polls open on election day. You are still allowed to personally hand in your ballot at the election office. The deadline to do so is 8 p.m. on November 3rd. In court news, a man in prison for raping a woman he found in a downtown Missoula parking lot is getting a new trial. Yesterday, the Montana Supreme Court ruled Shane Pelletier had ineffective counsel in his original trial, citing issues with cross-examination. In 2019, Pelletier was sentenced to 40 years behind bars for the crime. He claims he took an extremely intoxicated woman back to his home to help her, and they eventually had consensual sex. The victim said she never gave consent. A new trial date has yet to be set. 13 suspects are facing charges for an alleged domestic terror plot. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, authorities say the plan included the kidnapping or even killing of the governor of Michigan. An alleged scheme against Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer is thwarted by federal and state officials. We came very close to a, a, a plot that was to kidnap me and, and to murder. That was what the affidavits say. The six federal defendants appeared in court Thursday. They talk about showing up at her house, ringing the doorbell, and just shooting her if she answers the door. According to a federal complaint, there were plans to storm Michigan's Capitol building, to try Whitmer for treason, and to conduct firearms and tactical training. Seven other men face a variety of state firearms and terror charges. President Trump took to Twitter Thursday blasting Whitmer for doing a terrible job before he denounced any extreme violence. If the threat actor sees a sandwich of criticize the governor, you know, good thing that they thwarted, I condemn violence, but criticize the governor again, their takeaway is, hey, we're, he's still on our side. If we want to talk about hatred, uh, then Governor Whitmer, go look in the mirror. I mean, she wakes up every day with such hatred in her heart towards President Trump. Whitmer, a frequent critic of the president, said she asked the White House to tone down the inflammatory rhetoric that she said helped spark the alleged plot. The fact that after a, a plot to, to kidnap and to kill me, this is what they come out with. They start attacking me as opposed to what good decent people would do is to check in and say, are you OK? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Michigan Republicans, including Senate Majority Leader Mike Shergi and Party Chair Laura Cox, condemned the alleged plot against Whitmer. The Texas police officer charged with murder and the death of an unarmed black man has been fired. On Saturday, Officer Sean Lucas responded to a domestic disturbance. The victim's family claims he was helping to break up. Lucas tried to detain Jonathan Price, but he walked away. That's when the former police officer tased and shot Price four times in the torso. So, in a release, the police department said Price never posed a threat to Lucas. The mother of a 17-year-old boy who was shot by police in Wisconsin was arrested while protesting his death last night. Tracy Cole is the mother of Alvin Cole, who a police officer shot to death at a mall last year. Police also arrested Alvin Cole's two sisters last night. The arrests were for curfew violations, and several other protesters were arrested as well. On Wednesday, the Milwaukee County District Attorney decided not to charge Officer Joseph Minsa. 
Police say Cole was shot after refusing to drop a gun outside the mall. Also making headlines this morning, Hurricane Delta picked up strength last night as it turns toward the Gulf Coast. The Category 3 storm is now packing winds of up to 120 miles per hour. In parts of Louisiana, they're still cleaning up from Hurricane Laura. And as CBS's Courtney Zabowski tells us, residents are worried Delta will set them back even further. Residents along Louisiana's Gulf Coast are packing up and heading north again. It's getting tiresome. It's, but it's part of being here. I mean, the good times far outweigh, outweigh the bad. It. Vic and Bibi McElroy are under a mandatory evacuation as Hurricane Delta approaches. It's the third time this year they've had to leave home. They're forecasting the water may be as high as seven feet, so we just don't take a chance. Just six weeks ago, Hurricane Laura slammed Lake Charles as a Category 4 storm. Today, debris is still scattered around the city, and blue tarps cover many houses. If we got a lot of rain and all of this debris just starts floating around, that gets dangerous. This is the fifth time Louisiana has been under a state of emergency this hurricane season. Officials are warning of a life-threatening storm surge of up to 11 feet in some areas. Southwest Louisiana is going to get more of a punch from this than we would like to see for sure. In neighboring Texas, residents are following the forecast closely. Yeah, I mean, you're nervous. Uh, you're, you're, you're watching. Your eyes are glued to the path of the storm. Jamie Blackburn is ready to board up if Delta moves west. We got the house stocked with canned goods, groceries, water, and we're just going to stay here and see how it goes and keep an eye on it in case it turns our way. The National Hurricane Center expects Delta to make landfall this evening. Courtney Zabowski, CBS News, Lafayette, Louisiana. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards is encouraging residents to take extra precautions due to the coronavirus pandemic.